Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Today we are starting a series talking about color theory and specifically relating to watercolor. So today, the first part is gonna be talking about a value scale and we are gonna do two examples and for all of this, we are only using one color. So let's get started. Okay, for materials today, I'm using an eight by 10 sheet of watercolor paper. Um, I always have these two brushes on hand, my 3 4 inch flat brush, and then my round brush, 14 inch. Um, again, I use bigger size brushes just because um, it helps me not get too detailed. You do not have to use this size, you can use any size you want. And then Winsor Newton watercolor palette that I will link below. I have had this for like almost four or five years, so it's lasted me a long time. Um, there is one color that I always add to my palette, and it's actually the color I'm going to use today. I put it in the little spot that's supposed to be for your water. Um, and that is, I put uh, ultramarine blue in this spot. I've just, it doesn't come with this palette, and so I just have a tube of it that I've always added to right there. And that's what we're gonna use today. But for today, you can use any color you want, but we're only gonna use one color. Okay, for setup today, um, I used tape to create my value scale up here with five spots, um, and then two just like squares down below. Um, the reason I tape is just to get the clean lines. It's definitely not something you have to do. Um, it's just, again, it's more of like a preference thing so that it's nice and clean when you take the tape off. Um, for today, we are talking about a value scale and specifically with how it pertains to watercolor. Um, for beginning watercolor, it's always um, a question of how do I get a lighter blue versus a darker blue? And with acrylic paint or oil paint, it comes down to to lighten your blue, you add white, and then to darken your blue, you could add, um, well, Technically, you wouldn't want to add black to darken it. You would add a complementary color, but we would add other colors to it to darken or lighter, lighten it. But with watercolor, the way to lighten your color is just with water. Um, you're not going to add white to make it lighter. So what I mean by that is we're going to do a value scale, and a value scale is showing the lightness and darkness of your color. So we're going to start out and we're going to try and make our blue as dark as we can and then we're going to try and get it as light as we can by the time we get down to the end of this value scale. And the way we're going to do that is by adding more water. So I have my blue. I'm just going to put some of this blue up in the top of my palette. And since I'm trying to go really dark with my blue, I'm going to want very little water on my brush. And so right now I actually have too much. So I'm just going to come over to my paper towel and just lightly dab some of that water off and then come back to my paint. And I'm trying to really get mostly paint on my brush and very little water right now. And you'll notice that our blue is going to be a lot, lot darker. And then I'm just pulling that across. I'm even probably going to come over one more time once this is dry and add even one more layer of the blue. So now without rinsing my brush, I'm gonna come to my water, put a little bit of water on my brush and just kind of come over to my palette in a clean spot and just get that water mixed in because now that I added a little bit of water to that paint that was already on my brush, it will start to lighten my blue. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get some more water on my brush, come over, Maybe just dab it a little bit on the paper towel and again, do my next swatch and then I'm gonna do a little more water. When I come over to my palette, and I'm just trying to get that water mixed in with a little bit of paint on my brush. And then I'm gonna dab that, get some of that excess off, have a little bit more water and do my very last swatch. Um, if we notice, we're starting to get lighter as we've added more water to our brush. I am gonna come back to this one so that I can get that one just really, really dark. And I'm gonna have pretty much no water on my brush. So I'm gonna dab it on the paper towel and grab just my blue 
and come over one more time to really darken that one. So we have a nice, nice dark, dark blue. Pull it across. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse out my brush and then since there's a little bit of a extra water on here, I'm just gonna come and swipe that across. Same with this one, it had a little bit of extra water. To even lighten this one more, we can always come back with our brush, clean it out so that it's completely clean, no color on it, and you can always even wipe it across, dab on your paper towel, and then even come back and now we're picking up a little bit of that color and able to lighten that even more because we want this one to be really, really light. Now that's lightened even more. So on a value scale, technically our last value should be the white of the paper. Um, and I just didn't have room to have another one on here, but we'll kind of act like right here is the white of our paper. And then slowly it's inching up and getting darker and darker. Um, so it's important to know this in watercolor because you can create so much depth to your painting by just knowing your values and using them accordingly to your painting. So we're gonna do two examples down here. One is gonna be um, just clouds and knowing how to use just this one color to create depth in your clouds. And then this one, we'll kind of just do a landscape scene showing you um, again in the distance you're gonna have your lighter values, and then as you get closer to your foreground, you're gonna use your darker values, and you'll be able to create depth within your painting with that as well. So we'll put down um, our clouds first, and so I'm just coming back to this blue that I had in my palette. I had a little bit of water, so that my value right now is kind of just in the middle. I don't wanna start out with my darkest, and I'm not gonna really start off with my lightest. I'm gonna kind of be more around like a two. And I'm just gonna come in, and actually before I even put that down, I'm gonna wash my brush real fast. We're gonna do a wash on both of these. And so I'm gonna have my brush completely clean and I'm just gonna put water down, going across my whole square, lay in water on both sides. We're gonna do a very light, um, solid block of color going across both of these. And so now I'm gonna come back to that blue that I had and then just lay that in across both squares. So that we're starting with this, this value, this light, light value. Okay, those are both wet. So what I'm gonna do is go blow dry it real fast so that it's dry. You want it completely dry before we start adding on top of this. Okay, now that this is dry, I'm gonna come in again with a two, three value. I like numbering them, um, one being my lightest or one being technically white, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna come get a little bit of blue on my brush. And I'm just gonna lay in some fun cloud shapes. I love doing um, clouds with the flat brush just because um, I keep them loose. And so having this big of a brush helps, helps me stay loose. As I technically get lower to um, the ground, my horizon line, my, my clouds get um, kind of thinner and smaller. And then up in the top, we're acting like they're closer to us. And so they're a lot, a lot bigger. Okay, that looks pretty good for that side. I'm gonna let that dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna come over on this side. And this side, again, we're just gonna do like a simple little landscape so that we can see, um, see our values. So I'm actually gonna switch brushes to my 14 round brush. Grab some of this blue over here. Again, I'm keeping it lighter um, because this is gonna be in the background. I'm just gonna do real fast. Mountain back here. If you start getting little pools on your paper of water, just always come and just dab your brush um, on your paper towel and that'll help uh, get off that excess water if you kind of have a little bit too much and you're trying to be detailed. Um, then in the foreground, I'm gonna get more blue on my brush 
I'm just gonna come in, put a little tree line down here. getting further away so we're getting smaller and then even just put a little bit of like a short line okay come in and put maybe a little bit of clouds up here Just kind of dabbing across. Rinse out my brush, add a little bit of water in there to soften those edges. Okay, that's good. Rinse out my brush, flip this around. Okay, I'm gonna come check this, make sure it's dry, which it is now. And now we're gonna add a second layer of blue on top of this. So right now, notice I've kinda got these values in here, so I'm gonna come in with these darker values of my blue and help create more depth to my clouds. So I'm coming on top of this. And just that darker value in there. I'm gonna get a little bit more. Put some into here. And again with clouds, you're in control of you're edging on, on these fun shapes that you create, whether or not you want it to be a hard edge like this, just keep it like that, or if you wanna soften it, just come back, have a little bit of water on your brush, a little bit of paint, and then just slowly dab it, and it will, will soften those. So it's totally up to you. But you always wanna have a mix, mix of everything. Um, you wanna have some hard, some soft edges, and helps it look more realistic. Okay, gonna leave that one alone. And it's kind of this fun process of going back and forth between these two and building up your layers, um, which is a huge part of any painting that you're gonna do, whether it's watercolor, acrylic, um, oil, it's, it's always this process of, of building up and having multiple layers. And so, like I said, in between, if it's not drying fast enough, just use a blow dryer real fast and um, blow dry it so that you can keep going. Okay, I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna kind of define these trees a little bit more. So I'm having just, um, I'm trying to have a nice dark, dark blue. So again, very little water on your brush. Um, so that is nice and dark.
Okay, now that we added a second layer to everything on here, we're gonna come back and just do one more on this, and then we'll kind of call it good. Actually, I'm gonna have very little water on my brush again, because I'm gonna kind of come back and have a little bit darker in here in some spots still. And again, to achieve that um, really, really nice dark, dark value, it's kind of going over um, some of these spots a few times. And building up that nice, um, nice, rich, dark value. Okay, that one's good. I'm gonna come back and just do one more pass on this one, same thing, adding this very final, final dark value. And then um, we'll take the tape off and look at both of them. I'm gonna blow dry this for a second just so it's dry. Okay, come back, add some more darks in here. Thank you for following along in today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about color theory and learning our value scale and how important it is in your painting, especially if you are traveling and only have a small palette. Um, you can create paintings with just using one color. So um, we will continue this series on color theory next time. And we will be talking about the color wheel and how to do complementary colors and add shadows to your painting. So I will see you next time. I, uh, what am I saying? Today, Hey everybody, and make sure you are sub subscribed, sub sub subscribed. <laughs> and subscribe, um, videos in this series, should I say that? Eh, cut.